Good morning and welcome back to my channel, Loving Your Life with Mama D, and I'm Glenda Davis, aka Mama D. It has been such a long time since I've been with you all. Um, so much has happened uh, since my last recording. I just wanted to come out and share some things with you because it seems that I feel better when I when I talk about it. Um, I lost my mom a few weeks ago on actually July 16th and I just wanted to share some things with you because I think they're important for you to know. I believe they can help you. I've learned some things and um, it's just important when you're going through a grief process whether you're mourning the loss of a loved one or it could even be a pet, but a loss is a loss. And um, <clears throat> many of you know that I was taking care of my mom through the whole pandemic. She was born in the first pandemic back in 1920. And she passed away as we were trying to end the second pandemic. And, um, and she survived it. She never once had a cold or anything. Um, but the situation with my mom is she took a fall on July 3rd. And this fall was uh, devastating to her. Um, on July 3rd, my mom got up really early that day. Um, she was actually sitting in her chair waiting for me to wake up at about 7.30 in the morning. I, um, I got up and fixed breakfast as usual. And I noticed mom wanted to, um, she wanted to go out on the porch. And not only the porch, but she wanted to go out in the yard and when she got out here in the yard, she wanted to sit in the lawn chair out there and she started picking at the grass and uh, I guess she was looking for weeds. And um, after that, she came back in and I tried to coach her to her seat because she usually would sleep between 10 and two. But this day, she did not want to go to sleep. It was like she was just fidgety. And um, she looked for the broom. She wanted to sweep the, the porch. She looked for the broom, but I had hid the broom out in the garage. She actually went in the garage trying to find the broom, but she couldn't find it. And, um, and she came in, she wanted to do dishes. She saw some cups and things in the sink. And so she got hold of those and she washed a few things. And she finally came back to her chair and she was just around and about all day. She even tried to run the vacuum cleaner. But make a long story short, um, she never took a nap that whole day. Um, what I found out later, um, she had a UTI. I didn't know the signs that they could make you, um, I guess you would say the word is fidgety or um, restless. So anyway, that night she took a fall around nine o'clock or so. Um, she actually got up out of her chair. She picked up her walker, put it in the chair next to her, and um, she went across the room and fell. She bumped her head on a table. Um, when I called the paramedics, they came and they bandaged her head up really good and put her in an ambulance, took her to the nearest hospital. And um, when I got there, you know, following the ambulance, um, her blood pressure was low, her heart rate was low, um, her breathing, heart rhythm, everything was off. Everything was off. <clears throat> they end up putting metal stitches in her head, the staples, 
and um, they also recognized that she had a hip problem. She must have hurt her hip when she fell. And um, they couldn't do an MRI because she had staples in her head at this point. So anyway, um, they got her a room. She stayed overnight. I thought she'd be there a couple of days and come home. Ended up that they wanted to send her to a nursing rehab center um, for rehabilitation because she couldn't walk because of that hip. And uh, I didn't want her to go to a nursing facility. I wanted her to come home. And, uh, but I kept getting information that I couldn't take care of her. She was going to be too much for me. Um, that would be best for her and all that. So I succumbed to the chatter in my ear. And um, we went on. I just told him, yeah, go ahead. Let's just do it. Uh, I was even having a hard time getting a wheelchair to get her out of the hospital to bring her home. I, it was just so much against me that I just said, you know, okay. Against my better judgment, she went to the nursing facility. Um, she got there on a Tuesday night, and um, uh, we visited her on Wednesday and Thursday. So on Friday, um, I took my computer to the, to the nursing facility and um, I was going to let her watch some of her favorite shows and um, somebody came in the room around 2 and told me I had to leave and someone had tested positive for COVID at the door I did not want to leave my mama in there with no COVID situation But I left, and I, I was I was devastated. I was very upset. Um, I notified the family what was going on, and um, I waited the rest of Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Finally. I was calling there and they were saying, we don't know yet when you all can come back. Finally, after about noon, they called and said, you know, we can come back. So I got to mom about two, maybe about, actually about 2.50 by the time I got my COVID test to go in. And when I got there, mom was in the bed. She was uh, leaning to the side and she either had had or was having a stroke um yeah when um when I approached mom I just greeted her mom and she kind of raised up in the bed and she made this sound that was like um, it was a um, it was a sound I will never forget it was like um, um, a help me it, it, was, it, it didn't sound like her voice it was anyway I knew something was wrong and first thing I thought, because I was feeling guilty that I hadn't been there in a couple of days, even though it was reasons beyond my control, I just knew Mama was having a fit because nobody had been there to see her. And um, <clears throat> so I um, I took her by, I, I grabbed her by her right hand, my right hand to her right hand. and. She just started squeezing my hand like that, just squeezing my hand. Like she was trying to tell me something. I said, Mama, what's wrong? And uh, I started praying for her, and 
I started to sing a little song and thinking that would calm her because I really thought she was upset with me. And um, so then I went to take her by both hands, you know, to try to comfort her. And I noticed that the left hand wasn't working. And um, I looked at her face a little closer and I noticed her mouth was kind of turned. So, um, I thought, she's having a stroke, man, if something's not right. And, uh, and, and I called for the nurse, I got my phone out, and I videotaped mom's hands. And when they came in the room, um, they took her vitals, and one guy said, no, your mother's not having a stroke. I'm like, something's wrong, <laughs> something's wrong. And, um... Finally, the doctor came in and he checked her out and said, these are signs of a stroke. And they said, call 911. So I rushed my mom to another hospital. Actually, but that's the north. And um, when she got there, they did a CAT scan of the brain. And uh, she had had a massive a massive stroke. It, it affected all everything. And they informed me that all I could do was call in hospice. So. How do you how do you deal with that? <laughs> how do you deal with that? So, um, so that night, um, they got her over to hospice and, um, me and my brother, um, we gave them all the information, saw that mom was comfortable and, um, I just went on home to get some rest. And um, the next day, when I came back, um, they started to prepare me for death. <laughs> so I finally made the decision to bring mom home. So Tuesday night, mom got home they set up her hospital bed and all the things that we needed they showed us how to give her her medicine and how to turn her in the bed and everything and uh, they assured me that mom was comfortable she wasn't suffering or anything and um, you know that was a, that was a good thing and so Wednesday um, my family came by my kids um, and they agreed to sit with mom because me and my husband had to go to a meeting and um, after that meeting I started feeling something on my chest just it was just like pressure like this pressing down on my chest and it just was just this uncomfortable feeling never felt it before and I told my husband, I think I need to go to the emergency room. So we agreed and we went to the nearest hospital and I got checked out. Uh, the blood work came back fine. The EKG was fine. But they informed me it was another test. It takes another two hours and I needed to stay. Now granted, mom's at home with my kids and she just got there and um, I'm thinking, you know, the emergency room, I'm gonna be hemmed up about four or five hours. I was okay with that. But that second test came back, something was elevated and they wouldn't let me leave. So we called the kids and uh, they made me come, me and my son stayed. Uh, I think it was my son or either my brother came and stayed. I think it was my brother. And, um, so the next day they transported me to another hospital because I needed to have um, an angiogram. 
anyway, to make a long story short, I ended up staying in the hospital all of Thursday. And uh, the angiogram was that night. And then on Friday, I had to stay in the hospital just for observation and waiting for the doctor to come in and give me the report. And um, so I didn't get released from the doctor till about six o'clock. And so uh, that put me home on Friday at about 8.40. So when I came in, in the house, here it is, again, I've been away from mom from Wednesday night to Friday night. I was feeling so bad, feeling guilty. But I had, anyway, um, so I saw mom about eight. 30. I came in. I apologized, Mom. I'm sorry I was gone. Um, told her I was at the hospital. I wasn't feeling well. Um, I kissed her. I held her hand. And this time I'm holding her hand. And um, um, she really couldn't squeeze my hand or give me any sign. But I knew she could hear me. So I talked to her real good. Told her how much I loved her and everything. And then my son came by. And then after that, my brother came by. He left just probably about quarter to ten. And mom passed away at about ten fifteen. I believe she waited for me to come home. <laughs> I do. I, I just want to believe I'm not being vain. I just really believe she knew I was her caregiver. She saw me all the time. I think she was comforted, comforted by my voice and my care. And uh, I believe she waited. I just want to believe that she waited for me. Had she passed away when I was in that hospital, <laughs> But I was home. Thank God. So, anyway, my mom left that night. It was a storm. Ooh, it was lightning and thundering. And when I put the message out to the kids that she had passed, um, everybody was looking at the elements. Everybody noticed how the thunder and lightning, <laughs> I said, Mama tore that sky up, tearing it up, getting up there. And she was gone. So. I was able to do mom's eulogy. The funeral home going service was very nice. Um, all my friends, family, church members, people who traveled from abroad, people who couldn't be there who sent me flowers and gift baskets and cards and phone calls. <laughs> um, I just want to say thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay, so anyway, um, let me just kind of wrap this up. So, um, my doctor's report, I didn't have a heart attack, uh, no damage to my heart, 
um, I just, I'm, I'm grateful for that. I went in time. And what I'm saying to you is that if you have any kind of chest discomfort or if you're going through some unusual stress, because the doctor told me all this was brought about by stress that I went through. And thank God that I went to the doctor because I had a plaque buildup. And had I not seen that, it was a heart attack waiting to happen. So, honey, when you feel that something ain't right, get yourself checked out. It may save your life. And I even said that my mom, she looked out for me even uh, in her dying because had I not gone through this degree of stress, I would have never got to the hospital to see that I had a potential problem going on. So um, listen to your heart, listen to your body, listen to the Lord, mm -hmm. keep those ears open. And um, as far as uh, stress and grief, go through the process. I'm going through the process. And I know my mom would not want me to be hindered. She would not want any of her children or grandchildren grief-stricken and to the place we couldn't function and all that. Mm -mm. So my mom lived a good life. She lived to be 101 years old plus five months to the date. I couldn't ask for nothing better. I couldn't ask for any more from the Lord. So I'm gracious, I'm grateful, and I am so happy to be able to get back with you and share another video. So, hey, don't forget to like and subscribe, comment, and I'll be getting back uh, on the grind pretty soon. I'll be getting back at it. I'm not gonna be, uh, I'm not gonna be hindered. <laughs> I'm gonna get back to it. So, uh, you be blessed and remember, it's your life. It's your life, honey. Love it. Take care of yourself. Love it and make the best of it. And until next time, God bless you.